open it up to question and answer and potentially stories if there are folks who are joining us who um, were a part of window dressers previously. So yeah, Laura, I'd love to uh, give you the floor to introduce uh, a bit about window dressers as we kick it off. Thank you so much, Becca, and I really appreciate you having me on to Weatherization Wednesdays. I am, uh, I'm Laura Seaton. I'm the Executive Director of Window Dressers. Uh, we are a primarily volunteer-run organization, and um, the staff at Window Dressers trains, supplies, and supports teams of community volunteers across Maine and now Vermont to um, hold like an old-fashioned barn raising in their community, but instead of building a barn, they're building interior storm windows. We call them insulating window inserts, and they fit right inside of your existing window and about double the insulation value of your window. And with 30% of heat loss uh, going out through doors and windows, that's a really important way to button up your house and keep it warmer. So, um, I, <laughs> you like that, Becca? <laughs> I, um, I, two years ago, I put together this Pecha Kucha presentation to spread the word in Maine. And rather than reinventing the wheel, I decided it was a, a great way to give you a little introduction to how window dressers works. Um, and then after the presentation, I'm just gonna give you a little update on what we've been up to and changes and developments at window dressers since that presentation was made two years ago. So why don't we take it away with the Pecha Kucha presentation. All right, we'll be with you here in just a sec. Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> In 2010, the Rockland UU Church realized that it was losing a lot of heat out of its leaky aluminum clad windows. A friend of the church named Dick Cadugan offered to build insulating window inserts based on a design he learned from Topher Belknap of the Midco Screen Collaborative in Damariscotta. Those windows are actually at the Belfast UU Church. The inserts were custom made to exactly fit the church windows. When members of the congregation felt how much warmer it was to sit near those windows, they asked if they could get inserts for their own homes. So Dick and his friend Frank Mundo measured their windows and custom built another 185 inserts in their basement workshop. Word spread, in the following year, the duo took orders for 1,231 inserts. Frank spearheaded a community workshop on Islesboro where the people who ordered inserts came together to build them. It was like an old fashioned barn raising. This workshop actually happened in Wells last year. Every year, the volunteer effort grew bigger. In 2012, they named themselves the Window Dressers, incorporated and gathered a board of directors. They purchased a computer assisted saw and labeling machine and built over 2,200 inserts at six community workshops. Eventually, the window dressers moved into the Lincoln Street Center in Rockland and hired a small staff to manage the cut shop and the growing number of community workshops. Each community workshop is run by a team of local volunteers. Window dressers provides the training, supplies, and support. The local team recruits community members who want inserts, measures their windows, and puts the measurements into our computer software. When all of the orders are in, they come pick up their pre-cut and labeled wood and all of the gear and supplies needed to complete the inserts. The local volunteers set up a pop-up community workshop in a donated space and bring dozens of volunteers together to complete about 300 inserts in a week. Here, Portland Mayor Ethan Strimling and Machaya Savings Bank employee Danielle Violet assemble frames at a Portland community workshop. Once the frames are assembled, the first step is to run a layer of double-sided tape around the perimeter of the frame. Then a layer of polyolefin, the same type of plastic used to wrap your food at Hannaford, is stretched across the frame and adhered to the double-sided tape. We have fun at our community workshops. It's a social event with a purpose, and it brings together diverse neighbors who might not otherwise meet each other. A second layer of tape 
and a second layer of plastic create a sealed insulating airspace around the wooden frame. Heat is applied to shrink the plastic and remove any wrinkles. We used to do this with hair dryers, but sometimes the volunteers got too close to the plastic and popped a hole in it. At this early workshop in Belfast, they even had to keep their hair dryers on separate circuits so they wouldn't pop the electrical circuits in the old system. Eventually, one of our volunteers invented a heat bridge. It's a PVC bridge that spans a table and has a heat gun set at just the right height. This prevents overheating and popping holes in the plastic. The heat bridge is one of our many creative inventions that allow us to make higher quality inserts more easily and in less time. Like this invention, the clear tape applicator allows us to apply a smooth and perfectly centered strip of sealing tape around the perimeter of the insert. This insert is being built at the Allagash Brewery in Portland. Allagash and Machaya Savings Bank are two businesses that have given us space to build and paid their employees to volunteer with us. The last step in completing this insert is applying a foam gasket around the perimeter. The foam ensures a tight fit and seals another airspace between the insert and your existing window. This is our board president, Diane Smith, applying the foam. Every day that we build inserts, our volunteers share a community meal. Some volunteers bring soup or bread or cookies to share with their fellow volunteers. Other times, local businesses donate food to our volunteers to support our effort. Sharing this meal together is another way that we build community. Because of our model of volunteer assembly, we are able to keep our prices very low for everyone who buys inserts. We even get grant funding and donations every year that allow us to give away about 25% of our, in our inserts to low-income families free of charge. Once the inserts are completed, they are easy to install. They, they simply slide into place and are held there by friction. In the spring, they slide right back out and can be stored for use the next year. With proper care, they will last at least 10 years. Homeowners and renters love our inserts, but they've also been a great addition to many public buildings. Here, three volunteers install extra large inserts at the Belfast Free Library. Inserts are much more affordable than replacing windows altogether, and they also preserve historic character. In this picture, the white insert is installed in a pine window so you can more easily see how it works. The tight-fitting insert traps insulating air between the insert and the window behind it, as well as between the two layers of plastic and the insert itself. This about doubles the insulation value of, of the window and still lets in all the winter sunlight and allows you to enjoy the view. We expect to complete nearly 7,000 insulating window inserts at 32 community workshops across Maine this year, from Wells to Machias and Lewiston to Presque Isle. By the end of this heating season, we will have built a total of over 33,000 inserts, saving an estimated 1.2 million gallons of heating fuel from being burned. Our mission at Window Dressers is to warm homes, help the environment, and build community so that we can make life a little better for our neighbors now and keep our planet healthy for the next generation of Mainers. We would love for you to join us in our work. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> All right, so I, I hope that gave you an understanding of how the Window Dressers project works. I want to give you an update on some numbers. I, I gave some statistics at the end of that presentation, but we've kept on working since I gave that presentation. So um, last year in the 2019 to 20 build season, we built 7,915 insulating window inserts, and we gave away 35% to low-income households at no charge. That brought our total of inserts built since 2012 up to 42,567. In, in last winter, 
um, as a result of all the inserts that have been built since we started in the 2019 to 20 heating season, um, we estimate that we've saved 447,000 gallons of heating fuel from being burned in that single winter. And we estimate that since window dressers started in 2012, that we have saved 1.69 million gallons of fuel oil from being burned. And since every insert keeps saving fuel year after year, that number just keeps exponentially climbing higher the more inserts we build. So I don't know about you, but when I see uh, slideshows or videos or pictures from two years ago, I sit there and I think, nobody's wearing a mask. How weird. <laughs> um, and that gives you a little bit of an idea of uh, some of the challenges we face this year. Uh, when the coronavirus pandemic hit the US, we realized very quickly that we were going to need to suspend our program for the year. Um, we thought about a lot of creative ways that we could make it safe for people to build the inserts by spacing them out and the station, the workstations out and having people wear masks and maybe holding it outside. But the first step of um, creating insulating window inserts is for volunteers to visit a homeowner's house and measure their windows for inserts. And we just couldn't figure out a way to do that in a way that was safe for our volunteers and for the residents whose windows needed to be measured. So we decided that the safest thing to do for our communities and our volunteers was to suspend our program for the year. It was a hard decision to make because we want to help people stay warm, but we also need to make sure people stay healthy. So um, last year we expanded into five communities in Vermont um, and had planned for this year to do much more so we had to pause it but we're still planning to have 12 to 15 uh, community builds in Vermont in 2021. Um, so, and, and we can possibly add a couple more. So if people are interested in hosting a community build um, in your town, please reach out to me and let me know. And if you want to find out if there's going to be a community build near you because you'd like to get inserts, please reach out to me and let me know and I'm happy to give you that information. Nice. So um, I think at this point, I'd like to see if people have any quest. Oh, no, hang on. I wonder if Doc is here. Is Doc here? Doc, if you're here, can you say something in the chat? Doc is one of our local coordinators. That's what we call the team leaders for the volunteers in Stratford. And um, they held a community build last year, and we'll do so again next year. Oh, and I see All he's right, been. Doc. We'll see if Doc can turn on his video and audio. So I'd reached there, out to. How's that? Yay! Ooh. There he is. What a tech wizard I am. <laughs> We've all had to become this year, right? <laughs> yeah, no kidding, no kidding. How are you? I'm great, Doc, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. I was hoping you could share with the viewers a little bit about what, what your experience was like hosting a window dressers community build last year and maybe a story if you have one. Yeah, sure, we, um, we collaborated with uh, Thetford and um, we built roughly about 250 windows, um, split it almost evenly across the board. We also <clears throat> built some windows for um, Two Rivers out of Cuici Regional Commission for their facility. Um, we had a great experience with you guys. Um, your, uh, your jigs and materials were um, awesome. The whole concept of a community workshop um, really brought a, a true mix of, of different people within our community together from all levels of life and um, had a 
uh, a wonderful experience with the whole lunch aspect of it as well. And um, are looking forward to doing it again. Um, and uh, I'm eager for the, the program to open up again. Yeah, we and are I'm glad to answer any specific questions. Um, you know, that we had, we, we were lucky in that we had a number of uh, philanthropic folks in both towns that, that donated money um, along with a local bank and um, also the NEGEF fund um, helped out. And uh, we have a secured another NEGEF grant for this coming year. And they seem fairly flexible about extending the funds uh, into 2021. So we're looking forward to uh, jumping on the bandwagon again. Thanks, Doc. That's great. Yeah, for those of you who are wondering about the funding that Doc's talking about, Window Dressers does do fundraising on its own. We do um, fundraising from individual donors. We um, write grant applications and we have corporate donors as well. And in addition to that, we encourage and support our local teams to do local fundraising because oftentimes it's a great way to build community partnerships with local businesses who want to provide services to benefit the community. And uh, when we work together, we can raise more money and we can help more people to stay warm. So um, Doc and Bob in the Stratford and Thetford group did a great job of doing some local fundraising for their group. And I wanna give a shout out to one of the funders that, that they mentioned, NEGAF, which is the New England Grassroots Environment Fund that funds small local projects for small groups that are looking to make a positive environmental difference in their community. And they have provided grant funding to several of our local teams, which has been really awesome. Wow. So That's... I'm wondering if we have any questions yeah, Laura, we actually do have a question. And thanks, Doc, so much. Um, it's fun to be, uh, we're, Doc, we're both kind of in the same area of the state, but you know, Zoom, <laughs> we get to be face to face. Um, so we have one question from Nancy, and her question is, you mentioned the three, there's around three goals for window dressers, warm homes, building communities, and then she was, uh, or building community and then she was wondering she missed the third one what is the third goal of window dressers outside warm homes and building community helping the environment there we go so <laughs> the, the beauty of window dressers inserts is that they both keep people warmer in their homes and because they're reducing fossil fuel use they save you money and importantly, they, re they reduce the amount of emissions that we're putting out in the environment to keep ourselves warm in our homes. Nice. Um, and while you're answering that, Laura, um, we actually got another question. See, I thought I was gonna have to ask mine, but we're getting them. Uh, what is the estimated cost of the materials for the average sized window insert? So for us, where we're buying products at wholesale cost in large bulk amounts, it's about $15 for the materials themselves. Wow. And what if, let's say I was a person who um, wanted to get a window insert, like let's say I lived in Stratford or Thetford and I wanted to do one, what would the likely cost be if I wanted to do it? I, and you can definitely pivot back to the fundraising side too. Yep. So um, if you are a middle or high income person who is paying uh, into the program, then the cost for an average size insert in Pine is $39. Wow. And That's in totally reasonable. 50. And the difference in cost between the materials and, uh, and what people are paying for them is really about the training and support of the local teams and the jigs and shipping the materials from Maine to the local site uh, and all of those other little pieces that go into running an organization. And if you're a low income household, you can get your inserts for free. And we invite low income folks to make a donation to the organization in any amount that they can afford. For some people, they can't afford anything and that's fine. For some people, they can chip in $10 or $20 or $50. And when low income folks are able to chip in, 
that allows us to extend the program to even more low-income households like them. So that it can be a powerful way for people to get inserts at an incredibly affordable cost and, um, and, and, and feel that they are also benefiting other people who are struggling financially. Nice. Yeah, we got a couple more questions coming in. So this is great. And thank you for explaining that, Laura, just like the, the idea that you're really working to make it affordable for everyone. And I love how affordable it is. Even if you are a moderate or upper income earner, it's definitely a choice you can make. Um, and I'm sure you can explain a lot about the savings too in the long run that you get for the upfront potential costs. But um, I did want to um, lift up a question we got in the chat, um, which is you just mentioned that New England funding source, that uh, the acronym, if I got it right, NGEF, it. <laughs> um, if you could talk a little bit more about that again. I think someone put it in the chat. Daniel oh. put it in the chat also. Um, it's the New England Grassroots Environment Fund. And you can see in the chat, the website is grassrootsfund.org. Nice. And, uh, and so the other question you asked, um, Becca, before you read that, that one out, um, to talk about the payback period for inserts, because that's a really important question that people ask about. And um, in most cases, obviously, how much energy you're going to save depends a lot on the quality of the windows you're starting with and uh, other factors in your house, like the efficiency of your heating system and things like that. So we can't give a hard and fast answer because every house is unique. But um, in most instances, people make back the cost of their inserts and reduced heating costs in one to two years of use. So that's a pretty quick payback period. That's huge. And, and not to mention you're comfortable. Yeah, and you're more comfortable. If you're a low-income household um, and, you're, and you're not paying for your inserts, the payback period is day one. That's huge. And actually, if I could take a moment, I want to say that one, in addition to saving heat, you talked about the comfort. And one of the things that we often experience up here in northern New England, where we have very cold winters, is this feeling of draftiness in our homes. And a draft is not necessarily air leaking through your windows. But when you have a cold surface of a window um, and the warm air from your house hits the cold surface, we, we all know that cold air sinks. So the cold air sinks and it displaces other warm air and that warm air moves up and then it hits the window and it cools and it sinks and it creates a circular air current in your house and you feel that cold air moving through your house, but it's just the physics of cooling air. And when you place an insulating window insert in, your, in that window, it significantly raises the surface temperature that the warm air in your house is hitting. And so the air doesn't move as much in your house and it reduces the feeling of draft even in, in windows that aren't leaky to begin with. Wow. Okay. Learning something new over here. Yeah. That's cool, Laura. And As actually, well, when warm air hits a cold window, the other thing that happens is condensation. And a lot of people struggle with condensation on the inside of their windows. And window inserts stop condensation from forming on the insides of your windows. So wow. it's a, another side benefit. Well, sweaty windows. I hear that all the time. It's like every, at least I, I'm sure it's the same, you know, so goes Maine, so goes Vermont, but we have sweaty windows too. So that's yeah. great. And we've actually got a bunch more questions. So I'd love to get to those. Um, we, you have, we have two questions here. Um, and the first one uh, is what kind of space do you need to be able to provide for the fabrication of the frames? Yeah. What locations work best? That's a great question. Usually we recommend that people find a space that's at least 20 feet by 30 feet and as clear and wide open as they can get. So an example of spaces that have worked really well for a lot of our local volunteer teams are um, church halls, community buildings. Um, we have like a boathouse in Belfast that does one. 
Uh, huh. we have the upstairs of a town office in Searsport is, is a wide open space that's used for town meetings and they also use it for their community bill. Um, Grange halls have also been used effectively. So there's a lot of public buildings like that or, or um, charitable organizations that are happy to make their spaces available for an event like this. That's great. And I know there's a lot of organizations in Vermont that fit. You said Grange Hall and I was like, ah, <laughs> there we go. I know a few of those. <laughs> We've even occasionally had some in schools. If they, you know, we had one community bill that held it over Thanksgiving vacation week and they were able to use uh, either the cafeteria or the gym in their local school. Wow. Yeah, I'm sure everyone could think of a building in their community that would definitely fit the bill. Um, and then actually um, a question after that was uh, you mentioned uh, the low income uh, or income eligible piece to window dressers for the low to no cost inserts. What, what do you mean when you say low income? What constitutes um, someone who would be eligible for that program? So anyone who's getting fuel assistance or um, a food pantry or food stamps or any public assistance like that would certainly qualify. In addition, we take into account people's personal financial circumstances. We understand at window dressers that not everyone who qualifies for public assistance wants to take it. And we also understand that some people may not qualify for public assistance, but they may have either a short term or a long term situation that um, is they're really feeling the pinch financially. So um, we empower our local teams to make case by case decisions. If the homeowner has a specific reason that they really can't afford the inserts, then we're open to supporting that. Wow, that sounds like a really simple way to do it. Um, thank you. Uh, and then a couple other questions coming through. Um, and we have a question about uh, where are the, okay, so are all the inserts fabricated in Maine or do you have a facility in Vermont? So our wood shop is in Maine. So when the local teams go out to their community and they're measuring residents' windows for inserts, they enter those measurements into a computer that is linked to our computer system here in Maine. And then all of the wood to build those inserts is cut on this super fast, very efficient saw that takes all the pieces of wood and decides the most efficient way to use the wood, right? And um, so the pieces of wood come flying off. They're labeled with the name of the customer and the name of their window. They're pre-drilled and then they're packaged up. So all of the pre-cut labeled and pre-drilled wood and then all the tape, plastic, foam, jigs and gear and all the tools are shipped to the local site and then they put the insert um, frame together and do the um, tape plastic and foam there and then um, they're able to have the inserts ready for pickup. So I hope that answers the question. I think it's currently we only have one wood shop in Maine. I think that that's exactly I hope uh, what this question asks asker was looking for because it's interesting how you have like the grassroots model of you really do package it up for people but they're being built in the community that they're serving which i think is just that gorgeous blend um with the work that you do um and then yeah clearly people are excited about it. we want you in vermont uh more than you already are i guess uh, because we have a question about what other areas of vermont do you have or are you targeting for community built so uh, in 2019, we had, let's see if I can remember them all. We had Glover, Montpelier, Stratford Thetford, Charlotte, and Bristol. And you got Charlotte, Charlotte right. You pronounced it correctly. Woo! <laughs> and um, in 2021, when we reopen our program, um, we're going to have a community build in just about every corner of Vermont. 
Um, our, the interest we've gotten has been from all over. I came and um, talked at the VCAM conference last year and just had energy committees from all over the state come up and express interest in hosting. So I can list them off if I, if the, the folks that have expressed interest, if you give me just a moment, I'll pull up my list. But we have um, the Bennington area, Brattleboro area, uh, the Manchester, Sunderland, Dorset area, Londonderry, Wordsboro, Wyndham area, Springfield and Rockingham, Hartford and Heartland, Norwich, Vermont and Hanover, New Hampshire, Stratford, Bedford coming back, Bradford, Corinth and West Fairley, uh, St. Johnsbury and Danville, uh, Glover and Westmore and Sutton, Craftsbury, Greensboro and Albany, Montpelier and Northfield, Randolph, Bethel, Waterbury, Stowe, Charlotte, Virgins and Williston, and Bristol and New Haven. Wow, you really are covering the whole state. Yes. We haven't had a lot in the Burlington area, actually. Surprisingly, Charlotte is the closest that we have to Burlington. Um, so if there's anyone in the immediate Burlington area or north of Burlington, um, and I think maybe, maybe in between Burlington and Montpelier, we could use a little bit more interest for sure. But um, yeah. please do let us know. Great. And I'm sure that uh, every one of those communities is excited for the day that we can get back and really do this work with window dressers. So that's great. So I'm, I'm realizing we're uh, coming up on time flies. It's already 1237. As we have said throughout all of these uh, weatherization Wednesdays, we've tried to keep it for 12 to 1230. But each time it seems like we get great questions that push us over that half an hour mark. Uh, so if you are on this and you were expecting to be on for only a half an hour, um, no hard feelings. This is recorded and it's also on Facebook as a recording as well. So if you have to jump off, uh, that's totally fine. Um, we, I'm not seeing any other questions populate right now. So uh, unless I see one in the next like 10 seconds, might be time to do our trivia quiz. <laughs> All right, let's see how people's memories are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so uh, if you were listening earlier, um, you may have heard uh, Laura say some numbers uh, that uh, are pretty, oh, let's see if I can do uh, from current slides. So you should be seeing a slide that is blank because I'm about to sh tell you a trivia question <laughs> from today. Uh, so earlier, uh, Laura mentioned uh, some numbers with some uh, exciting information about uh, the window dressers program and the work they've done. So if you get close, so go ahead and answer these in the chat and I have the answers at the end, but if you get the correct answer, the closest correct answer, of the folks who answer these questions, we have a special smart thermostat giveaway for you. So maybe you were paying attention and if you get close, uh, you might even win. So the first question, da, 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 da. how many inserts were built in 2019? And if you're watching on Facebook, you can put it in as a comment. If you're on Zoom, you can go ahead and pop it in the chat, but yeah, how many inserts were built in 2019? I was, I was pretty impressed. <laughs> oh, I think we've stumped him. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, okay, Howard. We have someone who's answered news. Okay, someone was listening. Oh, look at this. Here we go. We got some answers. Very, very good. Very close. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll jump to the next question if you're still pondering how many inserts were built in 2019. Maybe this next one will be the one that you remember. So as, as Laura mentioned, there's a lot of goals. There's three goals to window dressers. And as we highlighted, uh, 
environmental impact is a big one. So how many gallons of fuel were not burned in the winter of 2019 to 2020 because of installed window dressers inserts? It's a pretty big number. How many gallons of fuel were not burned? I was, I was blown away by this, but you know. Oh, I'm seeing some answers in there. Okay, some folks were, folks were paying attention. Nice. Uh, I think we've got a, a three-way race for this uh, <laughs> this ins uh, this um, smart thermostat. Uh, next one: How many inserts have been built since 2012? Since window dressers started? Oh, and I see we've got a Facebook commenter too. So uh, we see you and you're getting good at this Facebook commenter, <laughs> um, getting close. <laughs> uh, yes, how many inserts have been built since 2012? Big number. Oh, our Facebook commenter is doing really well. <laughs> some of these attendees have been here before and they know that it's a good idea to take some notes so they're <laughs> ready for the quiz at the end <laughs> there we go <laughs> uh, and then I'll uh, we have one final question um, which this is the number that I was I've been pretty impressed throughout it this was a number that made me go wow uh, how many gallons of fuel were not burned because of window dressers inserts since 2012? So since the beginning of window dressers and the work that's been done um, by Laura and her team, how many gallons have been not burned? I mean, it's a pretty, pretty big number. Whoa, we got someone real close in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> we've got oh there we go we've got some uh look at that <laughs> someone might have a fact sheet available or a photographic memory <laughs> uh well with that um that was kind of our fun end of it quiz um and i'm not seeing any more questions but i did just want to end by saying thank you laura um this was great um I knew that uh, if we got a question mark answer for that last one from someone. So, <laughs> yep, tough, tough questions. Uh, we'll let you know who won the smart thermostat. Um, seeing in the chat some uh, great thank yous. Um, oh, Daniel says we should go over the answers. I should probably give you the answers, right? That would be, I should end with that. <laughs> uh, so if you were paying attention at home, uh, the number of inserts built since 2019, 7,915. So, so folks in the chat, good job. Uh, then the next question was, how many gallons of heating fuel were not burned during the winter of 2019 to 2020? And that number was 447,000, if I said that correctly. That's mm -hmm. yeah. Enough. Uh, then for question three, since 2012, 40, no. Do you mind saying that number? I think I wrote, I have 42,000. 42,000. And I think I wrote it 42,567 was the there total in since we go. 2012. Nice. And then the big number, one million, the last question, how many gallons were not burned since 2012? 1 million point 69 1.69 million gallons of fuel was not burned so it's a lot we're very proud of that very proud of that i think it's one of the reasons why i love working for window dressers is because you know we all the climate change is such a huge problem and you can make changes in your personal life but few of us have a, a real ability to impact the global policy, right? And, and you know, you can call your legislators and vote for people, but there's not a lot between those two things. And a window dressers community build gives people the opportunity to work on a regional level and have an impact beyond just their own home, but to encourage other people in their community to save 
um, fossil fuel burning as well. So I, really, I, I just want to shout out Jeff, Jack, Jeff Jackster in the chat um, from Sunderland, Vermont. He worked on the Bristol project last year and will be joining us as one of our new community teams next year. I see you, Jeff. We're looking forward to working with you in 2021. So Becca, thank you so much for having me on today. And thank you to everyone who tuned in. Uh, and I hope we get to work with you in 2021. Ooh, great. Thanks so much, Laura. And uh, have a good rest of your day, folks. We're uh, headed out now. So bye. Bye.